So hello everyone. Uh, first of all, wish you all a very happy and prosperous new year. Uh, welcome to the first tool talk session of year 2023. And we have a great speaker to start with uh, this year in a great note. Someone who is very dear to us, someone who is very close to us and very much passionate about the tooling industry, Mr. Ravindra Guble. Welcome, Mr. Ravindra. Yeah, good afternoon, Nishan. Thanks. And, Thank you so much for uh, you know accepting our invitation today from your busy schedule. Yeah. Thank so, you. Uh, just to inform you, sir, uh, since the time we have started this tool talk section, this is the 16th one, and half of the speakers we have had from the automotive industry. Uh, you know, the opportunities and the size of the industry is such that we, we are keep going back to the automotive industry because we, all, we still need a lot of things to learn. And definitely, uh, you know, better than you who has spent like uh, more than three decades in the industry. So, welcome again from, uh, you know, Tagma management and the tooling fraternity. Thank, thank, thanks once again. Thank you. And uh, I just forget it's my pleasure to be with associated with Tagma and uh, such a lovely audience also here, which are our supplier partners, tooling industry. And I wish a very fantastic and miraculous uh, new year 2023, where India is growing and we being the Indians. Yes, all the best to all of us. That we are also equally growing. Thank right. you. Yeah. yeah. Go on. Okay. So, uh, so of course, many of the our uh, you know attendees know you personally, but just for some people who might not know, I'll just uh, would like to give a, a brief introduction of Mr. Ravindra Google. So, Mr. Ravindra Google is currently working as a senior general manager purchase of interior and plastic division in Auto Tata Autocom Systems Limited. Mr. Ramin has over 35 years of experience in the automotive industry and has closely seen the industry growing. After having worked with Mr. Abhay Firodia, chairman of Force Motors and handling purchase at the sister concern of Force Motor, he joined Tata Autocom as a senior general manager purchase in 2010. He handled purchase for Tata Autocom interior plastic division, Pan India is spamming across diverse domains such as large projects for cost reduction, resource optimization, latest technological trends in the molding industry, lean and just in time sequence production improvement, new component supplier development and engagement programs along with leading training and building a strong team for IPD. In new role, he is handling purchase end to end with direct reporting to the CEO and MD, Mr. Arvind Goyal, for new plant and facility development across the entire auto, auto comp. Right, so that's Mr. Ravind. Uh, we all know that we are going to have a great time for coming uh, 45 to 60 minutes. So, um, Mr. Ravin, uh, to start the session, uh, to set the tone of the session, if you could just yeah. talk about the tooling division of auto component, uh, Tata auto comp uh, component in the systems. If you can yeah. look at, uh, what all you do, what all activities, product you manufacture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine, fine, fine. Thank you. Thank you, Nishant, uh, for a nice introduction. Yes, uh, just, just to quickly, Tata Auto Comp Systems Limited, as we know, TACO was started in 1995 way back just to understand the automotive industry and to cater this automotive industry. And we are the actually tier one suppliers for the automobile industry and having a 51 plants throughout India plus eight plants abroad. Like uh, we have a division in Taco Nanjing where we do a lot of molding. Then we have in Poland Titanex and Mexico Titanex also. And a lot of things are on the way setting up plants in Europe, molding plants and those things. Under Tata Autocom, we have a many vertical Autocom plastic division, that is interiors and plastics. But others are uh, uh, TGY, where we make a batteries with the UASA collaboration, Ocean batteries, Prestolite, Tata Toyo, Tata Radiator, Picosa. So all these things are adding up and uh, really business is growing in automobile section. So almost uh, 15,000 plus employees we have. This year turnover is expected to be 15,000 crore compared to last year it is going to be around 70% growth. So it is a fantastic growth uh, procurement for the entire Tata Autocom group and uh, 
we putting to our center purchase here mr vishal sir and of course with the md sir so this is brief about the tata dogom yeah thank you so much sir thanks for the information and uh, uh, as you have having a 33 decades of experience in the industry or three decades uh, what are the trends you see shaping up in the global and the auto uh, indian automotive industry a uh, very relevant question is as on today's situation now globally yes car industry is uh, let's uh, come out of that temporary phase of little bit slow down and uh, all that globally not in indian market right. but the car industry is growing everywhere specifically mobility and uh, coming of the new ev cars really that is putting a lot of uh, innovations and the requirement from the customer because the cars are becoming more and more silent engines are becoming more and more efficient so that uh, noise or the smallest noise inside the car is not permissible fit and finish aesthetic requirements those requirements are really growing up like so as i was explaining the requirements on the fit and finish parts highly aesthetic parts multi layer graining laser graining cd graining all these things have started in the aesthetic side plus the use of lot of fabric vinyl leather on the interior parts which was restricted to few parts earlier now it is going on the d pillars and those pillar sides ip trims door trims means aesthetic requirements are also going up very high at the same time ev parts are coming in so lot of uh, engineering molding engineering plastic uh, parts are seen and same thing is getting translated even to the domestic side but being the our own country our own challenges we are focusing more on the light weighting light weighting of the parts and right. uh, continuously transforming from metal to aluminum to engineering plastic now to the pp raw materials for the basically for the cost reduction but at the same time our industry is also equally concerned of the high aesthetic requirements meeting the customer requirements and we are also in ev as everyone knows tata motors who aggressively they are working on the ev and we being the major compound suppliers to them right so we are also into that ev part making in plastics as well as other areas also so definitely lot of challenges new technologies innovative uh, way of working things are happening in this global as well as domestic industry also and now there is hardly any gap between the global and domestic what happens globally very short time it do come in the domestic industry also right it's a nice time now for the business great great so you are talking about uh, light weighting and you know uh, going towards aluminum and the plastic co products is the one of the biggest trend happening in the automotive industry how it is going to impact the tool makers in future yeah tool maker in the by and large it is going to impact even we as a part maker and since we want to make those parts so we are uh, translating our requirement to our uh, tool makers our those partners who are giving the i will say the birth to the tool right. really it is a new technology innovations and they are working on that so de definitely now considering those uh, innovative ways new products new technologies it is challenging on them also how fast they can raise themselves okay to produce such tools with the low wall thickness even in the pp as well as engineering plastics also okay because specifically in the battery packs on those thing wall thicknesses are quite low hardly 1.2 to 1.3 mm even for the engineering plastic plus insert molding on all three sides core cavity core sliders means everywhere there are multiple inserts so that insert molding plus uh, wall thicknesses quite low and the uh, deep uh, injection so in a particular tool uh, just to share example smallest tool we made for the battery and having a 500 plus ejector pins in such a small tool okay. such challenges were not seen in the conventional automobile parts let it be a uh, as big as the bumper part or the fascia or the floor uh, cons console or those parts they were not that complicated so definitely that is putting lot of challenges on our own tooling industry also at the same time as usual delivery 
targets quality requirements are very high first time right because now first time right is not only in the production but whatever i do it has to be first time right and customer expectations are going up day by day so definitely these global challenges have come down to our industry for the part making and they are translated now on the tool makers right right and in such development uh, with the new trends happening light weighting and you know evs and all those things what role tool makers have to play and how they can equip themselves to be updated with the you know changes happening in the automotive industry yeah since this a uh, really mission uh, to adopt the something new to see somebody unlike the earlier things also which were more relevant till yesterday but now we need to change our style we will have to unlearn few things and uh, start uh, working on the new things maybe a one of the example earlier my trend was i should have all the equipments required infrastructure under one roof under my control right so i will do right from uh, rough machining pre machining cnc machining edm wire cut everything to finish the tool but now maybe time has come where we'll have to work under the different approach where the slow end jobs i get it done outside maybe my dedicated sub suppliers or the cluster industry and then i focus on my core activity maybe in this core activity maybe a designing production building all these blocks getting those blocks from the outside industry we need to treat that outside industry as our partners only in the business partners right train them if required do their hand holding get the things done exactly as per my drawing so the real pressure comes on our design team to make a perfect drawing which that person will just understand as a drawing and that part and he will make that part as for the drawing he may not be aware where this part is fitting what is the end purpose but he is sure what is drawing has been given that i replicated i will get all those parts including bop parts and i do the finish uh, finishing at my end maybe just the last uh, few micron cut or something and make that tool and do the bench work make the tool and try outs so this i call as the undone go of our conventional way of working and learning the new techniques true this will have to do at the same time we will have to develop the skill in our own team definitely now customer lead times are uh, turning very short car launch time if we see it is not more than a year drawing go to the car on the road which earlier time was quite high couple of years but now that's not the case right. even by the time new car is launched oem they are uh, working for the facelift also down the line immediately so development is very fast because we as the end customer we are putting all these pressures on the car makers to meet our need as a end customer so that need is getting transformed to us tier 1 same is getting transformed to tool makers so now really we need to have a very fast turn around for the tooling industry how fast i can deliver how accurately i can deliver and one has to understand the customer needs whether it is stated or unstated but really those time has come now the customer may not be in a position to put everything on the paper but we being a expert we understand what he exactly needs have a close interaction with the customer and also as a new part now have a close interaction with the raw material supplier yeah. with the machine on which machine this mold is going to get loaded which make machine what are the parameters of that machine so all these three teams raw material machine maker and tool maker along with customer the product can be made successful so that sort of a teamwork is a now need of an hour okay and maybe a cluster type of working okay okay and a very important is the design lead time if we see our design lead time is a little bit higher how we can shorten it okay okay that really we need to work. maybe multiple designers working on the same product at a time but finally all these dots are joined and to make a beautiful design a beautiful picture so collaborative type of working may be a key now right so uh, 
I understand uh, you work with a lot of tool makers in India and you know around the world as well. So, in your experience, uh, what are the uh, you know fundamental differences you have found while working with the overseas tool makers versus the Indian tool makers? Yeah, slightly tricky question also, Nishan. The difference between the export and the importing the tools and making the tools in India. We as a tier one are continuously under pressure. One side is our uh, customer, OEM customers. We need to meet the timeline. And another side is our sub suppliers, in this case, is the tool makers. And timeline is for uh, right from sharing the quotation to the customer till the last part production, series production. Till that time, we are on the in between, between our various supplier partners like tooling, raw material, molding partners, as well as the designs. So in this, what difference personally I see, this is my personal opinion, sometime I may be wrong, please uh, pardon me for that. But overseas toolmaker, what personally we see is a very fast response. The moment okay. our nail goes with the RFQ, we start getting the response in a couple of hours. It, yes, we have received your RFQ, we are working, by tomorrow we will get back to you. So very first thing is the response. Their response is very fast. Next okay. day, if they are committed, definitely they will come back either with the quotation or a valid queries which they want to know before they work commercially and before they do the technical also. So they will go through the details, they will raise their queries. If any suggestion they want to give, where they see any some uh, potential problems, that also they will highlight and they will share their expertise with that. In this area, we find something, can it be done this way? So the early involvement, we will say that they start doing there also, in RFQ only. But okay. then we get commercials very fast, which we can share with the customer and settle it. Versus in our industry, it is little sluggish in this area. Our designs or those things do take time. And definitely overseas, once the orders are placed, what comfort they give to the customer is a continuous reporting on the tooling progress. Okay. Bought out part progress. Then bought out maybe a steel, maybe HRS, maybe other items. But what's happening when they are giving us T0 and they meet those dates? Because Nishan, I'm sure everyone will agree with me. In a car, there are hundreds and thousands of parts. Any one part get delayed development. The entire car development is at stake then. True. And for, uh, fortunately, unfortunately, we are in a plastic. So unless we supply parts, car cannot be assembled in many times with the functional part. Testing cannot move ahead. And there are a lot of testing OEMs has to do before they give us the final clearance on that part. And definitely ECNs, which is a part of this business. Whatever we try to do, we have minimized a great way. If earlier ECNs were in double digit, now they came down to single digit and now very few ECNs because really we are also matured. OEMs or tier ones or the tooling people, design people of everyone. But then the response to ECN to make that correction, engineering design changes and submit again a revised part, those timelines. So definitely, yes, overseas where I will say they were experts, but now definitely our Indian industry is catching up with that. All needed infrastructure we have in place. Okay. I mean, you name the machines, you name the tools, you name the softwares, everything we have at par with them. Okay. Not much difference now. Okay, okay. And that is a really a good line. And just to add one thing here, we were uh, at the Tata Autocom, TACO, we had a lot of debates with our end customers and we discussed and we came to the conclusion, let us start promoting our own industry. As a part of that, we started procuring all tools from local industry. And proudly we can say in last uh, seven, eight months back, we have placed the orders for bumper tools, six bumper tools, first time in India. Door tools, first time in India. Otherwise, they used to come all from China and Korea. Okay. Tools from Taiwan. That's great to know. Yeah. But we started it and uh, those suppliers did share a very good response. They came back to us saying just a couple of weeks back they got a similar bumper tool orders from other OEMs. 
So it is not just one tool maker, it is a sentiment in the entire tooling industry. Unfortunately, if this tool maker would have failed, then it is a pain for the entire tooling. India cannot make such big tools. Oh. But now, every OEM is getting confidence. If Tata Motor can do it, another OEM can do it, I also can try. Right. right. And, uh, the chicken and egg story. I don't have experience, so I am not expert, and I am not expert, so I am not getting orders. But now the things started changing. So I think uh, our industry can do a lot better. We need not to be worried on the overseas now. <laughs> Let them think us as the overseas uh, supplier for them now. Right. The for us. Right. So you said that the infrastructure wise, we are at par with the global tool rooms, be it our uh, machines, softwares, or you know other technologies. But I understand from your response that the communication is the thing where uh, you know you feel that the Indians are lacking. Absolutely. In updates and all. So how how they can improve? What are the things they can do or imbibe in their system that can help them? For example, one of the things that people say is that having corporate culture would help, but uh, it, it is also tough in tool rooms, which is mostly owner driven, to have a corporate culture. So. Do you think it is very important to have that kind of process-driven culture in tool rooms and if they have to do it, how they can go ahead and do it? Absolutely, absolutely. We are nailing the very correct uh, point, I think, Nishan, that our industries, majorly tooling industries are owner-driven or maybe under a MSME group. They right. are not a very big uh, tooling setups. Right. Just to name few also, uh, with the uh, kind of... Uh, Permission from Akshay Kalyanpur, yes, Sri Devi, once upon a time, they were quite small to do, but today they are the biggest to do in India, I can say. But they started as a first generation entrepreneurship. So more or maximum tool makers in India are either under MSME or started the business in this generation. It's not a generation after generation of big history behind that 100 years old tool room or 80 years old tool room like others. Right. So really we are challenged. Our industry is owner-driven, limited uh, resources in terms of a manpower, trained manpower or the, when I say trained manpower, not only on the shop floor, but in the office also. So maybe this corporate culture will help us there. Today in corporate, the culture, what is having, and when I say corporate culture need not to be the size of the organization. In corporate, we may have a quality head, we may have a design head, we may have a production head, tryout head, and so many heads, so many teams. In a small team, one person can have this multitask. Is the person for the production responsible? Same person is this. But then he knows three, three clear jobs. These three portfolios he is handling. So he can be expert in these three. So that sort of a corporate culture, I am meaning. No need that we have to increase the size of our tool room because again it will have an effect on the costing plus again a little bit delay in the communication because many people may agree that we make the team size bigger then the efficiency drops down sometimes. Communication. Right. Because one desk to other desk to third desk, it keeps moving. So definitely we cannot afford that also at this moment, but definitely we need a corporate culture. And another beauty of a corporate culture is a quality management, quality certification, training of the staff, training for the shop floor people. I mean, every person in the corporate undergoes continuous developments. Some skill, skill de development, maybe a soft skill, hard skill, that plus the trainings, day-to-day -day things, how I can be better, KRA driven systems, Every person is a KRA, so he's continuously monitored. Every month end is to complete his self-assessment. Uh, what was my KRA, what I achieved. If I have failed, how I can catch up. So maybe those cultures will help in this MSME industry. So really that can be a blend of MSME, but having a corporate culture. Maybe a good solution at this moment of time. And that may be the key now, Nishan. Right. right. Yeah, thanks for that information. Now, uh, my next question is, uh, you uh, I understand you source lots, uh, most of your tools from Indian tool makers and trying hard to make it 100% from India. But in which particular type of tools you find it difficult to source 
tip from the Indian uh, tool makers? Any specific type of tools that you are still you still have to go overseas? Yeah, uh, as I mentioned earlier, bigger tools. So many days it was a bottleneck, no doubt. Today also it is a little bit bottleneck, but these tool makers need to work in that area. Then maybe now the requirement is coming back on the foam injection or the core back technology tools, light weighting, thin wall section tools, high gloss, because now we cannot afford to have a painting operation because that adds the operation at our end, delays the delivery time, additional cost. So aesthetically, what I produce has is equal to the painted part quality and high gloss also, wherever required. So 2K molding, 3K molding, then definitely now a lot of electronics is coming inside the car. And now, okay. I mean, if we see the IP, there are so many switches, the door, so many switches. Now everything will vanish in a very short time now. They are going to be all touch switch. So a lot of IMD tools will be requirement, but with the embedded of electronics, PCBs and those things. Those technologies are still... Uh, we are lagging in that area. Okay. So those uh, high-end technologies now we need definitely. And for that, maybe a overnight development may not be possible, but maybe some tie-ups with the global tool rooms or the technical support, technical experts, or jointly our industry can join hands who are having experience and they can do something as a joint efforts. But that gap is there as on it, where we still depend on the overseas tool makers. Okay. Right. And for any kind of projects, uh, what are those checklists that you check in any any tool rooms before you select them for any particular product project? What are those factors that you always look into any tool room, uh, whether it's owner, infrastructure, or the company, the previous project? What exactly it is? Yeah, see, basically, I mean, uh, we as a customer, all of us now on this call are, everyone is customer. So same rule we follow, nothing much different. Right. Basically, the track record of our uh, supplier, supplier partner, what he has done in past. What is his experience to make the same part tool or the similar tool? How many he has made, how many rich experience he has? What is his uh, design strength? And when we say design strength, number of designers definitely is one part. How long they are with this tool maker? Okay. And what is that designing person's total experience? Suppose that designing person's total experience is 10 years, for example, and he is with this tool maker just for six months. Versus 10 years experience and with this tool maker is there for eight years. Definitely more weightage goes to the eight year guy. Though the total expense is same, because in any tooling, design and production, they are interdependent. It cannot be one side design and I give it to the production, my job is over. So this designer exactly knows what is happening on the shop, what I wanted and what is getting replicated on the shop, what is the deviation. So how I can make the perfect design so that shop people can make it, knowing his own limitation, strength, everything as a SWOT. Right. So those designers can be taken in detail. Then definitely their infrastructure, confidentiality, because nowadays that plays a very important role. Whatever drawing designs we shared at the time of RFQ also must be confidential. Okay. Because market we know presently. So everybody wants to be a one step ahead of other. That's it. At that moment, that moment of business. Next moment, we are also going to lack. So we have to do something new. So that confidentiality. Supplier, the, he and his team agile, how fast they can race to the occasion. Many times we don't get time to develop a tool, but the mindset of that tool maker, okay, how fast he can, how fast he can stand with us shoulder to shoulder. Yes, this is a challenge for both of us. Let's meet it jointly. This may be certain uh, errors, certain omissions from our side in the design or requirements. Stated or unstated, but still that uh, supplier partner is able to take care of that and help us in making that part successful. Right. So these couple of things, track record, design strength, is infrastructure, is finance, definitely, because a lot of parts, 
they knew uh, need the payment to be made in the, their sub supplier in time if that doesn't happen the bank doesn't support them end result is we get delayed delivery right. and their industry with whom they are depending their sub suppliers where they are getting pre machining rough machining electrode machining maybe how they are strong and what are their relations with them how long they are right. working with them so all that recipe will give me a best tool so in a very quick uh, checklist we do sometimes our technical team goes and does the audit his chauffeur audit his customer earlier customer record checking how they are satisfied what are problem they faced how this uh, supplier has raised to that requirement of that customer and i met that requirement it's a simple no complicated things absolutely transparent and i'm sure many of our uh, supplier partners must be following the same system with their sub supplier okay right and uh, that brings me to the next question and one of the thing that you pointed out is a skill set of the uh, you know design person or the overall team and uh, when i talk to tool makers one of the challenge that everyone commonly says is the finding a skilled man or is uh, very much challenging in the tooling industry so how how do you rate the skill set skill level of indian tool rooms and what can be done to enhance the you know current technical skill set of the tool, tooling people yeah it's a very <laughs> important question and the uh, answer is also much difficult a uh, bit difficult uh, nishan because uh, when i said uh, infrastructure wise we are at par with all other global tool makers in that includes the machines software cutting tools raw material what we use are all european steels and the very reputed hrs and hot runner systems everything is at par what right. makes the change is the man behind the machine and i will not say man also we have a enough manpower in india surplus manpower but mind behind that man that plays very important role whether that person is passionate about his own job whatever the smallest job he may be doing in his or any organization whether is the bench work or the cnc or the edm or the design how passionate he is about his own job and me as a owner of that tool room or a senior leadership member of that tool room what i am doing to make that person feel important raise his uh, passion that is very important and when we saw some of the tool rooms abroad they are running their own skill development center in house okay within their own premises for example suppose somebody is a expert in polishing a senior person maybe at worker level but then continuously he is coaching hand holding the juniors for the polishing job how to do it best how to do it still best so it is a continuous process because one thing is sure in india it is hardly possibility that we will get a very trained skilled manpower whatever is required it can't be we will have to develop our own skills we will have to develop and then either we take the help of skill development centers there are few in india now coming up maybe universities maybe those uh, institutes cipet and nttf and such institutes maybe local itis we take their help but definitely in every tool room we have to make that skill skill set available and their job will be to train the new entrants new joiners plus existing team we okay. have to do that skill because now that is the only job and the tool is the craftsman is the art science everything is a combination of all right but more over that passion because uh, nishant uh, slightly i will divert whenever i meet all these tool makers owners really i am very happy and proud to see their passion in running the tooling how many challenges they are facing but they are all passionate all passionate to make that tooling to making the new types of tool that new technology tools so right. that passion then need to percolate at down levels also ki every person is important and how they can raise their skill maybe in that they will have to take the help of customer they have they are organized from our side they can pull our experts subject matter expert they can be there for a couple of hours weekly or something to train their team soft skill training hard skill training training institutes universities or own 
skill development centers. And if few children join hand together, form a small skill development so that commercials and those things can be taken care, utility of that skill center can be taken care. But and another thing in this, Nishant, another thing is whatever trained manpower I had, a skilled manpower I had, tomorrow no guarantee they will be with me. They are going to leave me and join someone else. But then over a period, the skill set of the entire industry is going to grow. So really, one many people I get this comment that we are training institute. We are training people, people are going to leave out. It is going to happen. Same thing are faced in the bigger companies also. We also face the same things. But there is no option. People are going to go. Continuously, we will have to keep upgrading ourselves. Upgrade our thing, but at least then like that, the whole industry will raise its standard, skill standard. Right. So really there is no ready-made solution, but uh, everyone has to work in the skill development. And we are the team. Yes, we'll have to join hands. Right. right. So and skill I'm development sure, is going uh, to be the... Sorry, sorry to interrupt you here. Uh, only one minute I'll take. Many times we do call our raw metal suppliers or molding machine suppliers, they're expert at our end, to have a small technical discussion with our teams. What are okay. new trends of raw metal? What are the processing parameters to be set? How critical, how uh, crucial they are that we want a 10 degree, 5 degree difference in the molding temperature is going to make a huge difference in the end product. So such thing help can be taken by these tool makers also. Because they are also using a lot of raw material. Machine makers also will support them, I'm sure. And nothing wrong in asking the help from uh, experts in time. So just we need to ask help in time and get the help, I'm sure. Industry will help each other because finally it's the industrial uh, challenge today. Yeah, I'm done. Right. Right. So skill development is going to be the biggest trending topic uh, going forward. And uh, we might see many tool makers are also investing in the same in coming days. Right. Yes. Growth do you foresee for the Indian tooling companies in coming years? Uh, Nishant, actually, if you allow me to ask questions, then this question I will put it in the my all tooling partners right now on the call. Because they know much better than me how many RFQs they are getting. Domestically as well as globally. Right. You, growth absolutely unlimited, infinite now, huge growth, huge growth, because everybody wants China alternate, China plus, all that is on the one side, but within India, the buying power has gone up so high, so growth is in every sector of our industry now, it's not only automobile, but if you see the automobile, the toy industry, the lighting industry, packaging, white goods, every sector is growing and every sector is now using maximum plastics. Right. Because of its lot of advantages, everybody is using. So definitely that growth is huge growth now. Only how fast I can catch that and catch that opportunity and grow myself. Growth is huge. Considering our own, if you talk about Tata Autocom, yes, last year to this year, we are growing by 70%. Next year also by 70 to 80%. Okay. Five year our plan is huge, huge plan, huge plan. Automobile is growing like anything. And every year there are going to be new car launch, old car, but the facelift and maximum uh, per, uh, per car consumption of plastic is growing very rapidly, very rapidly. So for the plastic industry, if we talk, yes, huge growth. Yeah. Unlimited, I will say. As a Tata Autocom, we buy minimum 350 to 400 tools every year. Not only IPD, but with us, there is a Picosa who is making mirrors and other systems. Tata Toyo making radiators and those things. Prestolite and the Goshen making the batteries and EV vehicles. They need a lot of plastic parts. So as a Tata Autocom, minimum 350 to 400 tools, right from ranging 80 tons to 3200 tons, that big tools. And okay. this is going to get double in coming years. Right. It's a huge, huge, huge growth. Right. 
So uh, last question from my side, which we yeah. asked to all the speakers at the end of the session is your five suggestions or guidance to the Indian tool makers in order to be globally competitive. What are those five things you want Indian tool makers to work on? Oh, very tricky question. Yeah, first is I will again uh, get back to my response to the customer. Whatever their response may be, positive, negative, neutral, any response, but how fast we can be. How fast we can uh, turn around RFQ into a commercial quotation, technical quotation and share it with the supplier. Just to uh, give you an example, very recently we've uh, shared the RFQ with uh, overseas suppliers, including domestic. Trust me, Chinese supplier, along with the quotation in four days, he gave me 3D printed part also as a sample. We were worried ki who asked this part from our side. So when I communicated with him, he said, no, we made 3D part to understand what is that. And we made it uh, with a little modification. We shared those parts for your reference. This okay. is the world today. Along with RFQ, I'm going to get a 3D part also from my overseas. And if I am unable to give the design, the gap is very clear. We right. need to raise to that occasion. So response to the customer, RFQ queries and those things. Another thing is a very vital is the program management. Everyone has it, but let it be effective program management. Right. As I said, customer should be updated continuously what's happening at our end. Those dashboards, maybe we need to develop and which happens on the auto mode. No calls, no mails, nothing. We'll have to take the help of digitization now. The whole world is digitization now. Let us take the help of this technology. It is available with everyone. No new right. investments are required. Every day at the end of the day, I post everything in that. So the next day morning customer sees yesterday's progress, yesterday's fallout. And what is my catch up plan today? Just like a cricket scoreboard, every ball board is seen on the board. And what is the score out of it? Asking rate. So something like this we'll have to develop and it is a beneficial for both customer as well as supplier. Right. Their turnaround, their efficiency will grow like anything. And corporate culture of KRA, everybody becomes answerable, everybody becomes accountable there. I was supposed to make this yesterday. I did it at the end of the day. That gives the happy vibrations also throughout the team. Yes, what we said, we are achieving it. Okay. So that response, effective program management and innovative ways of doing the things. When I say innovative ways, I don't mean only on the shop floor. But every, every person in the organization has to be innovative, has to be innovative. Even I am sending the mail to the customer, how innovative it can be, how crisp it can be, how small but effective it can be. So that customer doesn't spend time to read lines after lines and to understand what I want to say. An innovative way. So really innovation in every aspect of that tool room, every aspect of that organization, every person has to be innovative. And really uh, that happy factor will go up in that organization. Everybody will start really feeling passionate and happiness. Or we are contributing something. Like a dot matrix printer, even if one dot is missing, that picture is not complete. So let everyone to feel, yes, I am responsible in my organization. I am required. I am adding value. He will start thinking of it. And innovation yes. needs to be a part of our day-to-day -day industry now. Then the design lead time, I spoke about it. And very... Rightly, I will put it here, what missing, what is my personal experience again? What went wrong and what went right in the last tool I made? The data bank has to be made. Okay, I made this tool. What all things went exactly as per my plan and what went wrong? And then the team can sit and do the analysis. Why? What went wrong? Why it has failed? I was supposed to do the machining in 30 minutes. Why it took 35 minutes? What went wrong? Whether the design was wrong, tool was wrong, machine setting was wrong. The moment this YY is done, quickly on the shop floor and by the design person, he can come back to make it in 30 or change the timing in 35. If the design was wrong, design estimator was wrong. Similarly, commercial estimation, technical commercial, everything, what went wrong and what went right. And what is the data bank till date, what tools we made. So very quickly that data can be helped when we get the same order. So every time we don't make the same mistake, same errors, same time lapse. 
we can raise to the occasion very fast. And lastly, I will put it early involvement with the customer. When customer, we know customers are developing those things, how best I go and share my experience, my knowledge, my expert in that area. I may get order, I may not get order. Secondary. But early involvement will help. Because now hardly few customer trust makes you feel that supplier are the supplier, but they are supplier partners now. We treat our both uh, things as the partner because without them we can't succeed. Right. So their early involvement will help us and definitely will help OEM who are under pressure to sell cars in the market because of the so many competitions there. So early working with the customer at the same time, collaborative way of working with raw material maker, machine maker, and definitely with other tool makers also, there is no competition. Because if any tool maker is getting one or two tools, we say no, you'll have to get the tools or basket of 10 tools. I can't make the follow with 10 different tool makers, better you take the basket of 10. If okay. you have any capacity problem, you work with your uh, another partner. Get a couple of tools made from him. You supervise, you do everything, but you are responsible. Similarly, where tier one gets the order from the OEMs in the basket. So that concept really will have to have and trust each other. No, 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 I don't think there is a fear of competition between the same business now. Toolmaker to toolmaker, let us support each other and get the certain orders in the basket. It will help everyone. So right. that way also, and another small suggestion from my side, I don't know how far it is correct, but what I saw in some of the tool makers, they are using it. Suppose I have got a couple of workers, now we are about to retire, but we are experienced and who wants to do something as a passion, maybe at young age. Right. Then I help him to start a small unit, maybe let's say a milling unit. I give him a couple of my machines, you start milling for me. Maybe then he adds some money from him, make a milling station for me. So then I know my milling job is entirely taken care by Mr. X. I need not to do it in-house. Similarly, I help somebody for ADM. It is extended of my, of my own factory. But then that worker, day-to-day -day management, I am absolutely relieved. He is taking care of, because that is his own unit. But he is supplying me 100% my requirement. And in the spare capacity, he is free to do other jobs. Right. I know the industry can help each other. Cluster development will happen. So these are a couple of things, response to the customer, innovative way of doing in every aspect of the tool room. Things went wrong, things went right, those records and data bank of the earlier toolings. Yeah. And early involvement with every stakeholder. Maybe this uh, little bit of entrepreneurship or developing own sub-suppliers. And very right. importantly, the skill development, in-house skill development. Right. Which is a continuous thing and one has to do every day. Improvement, right. improvement, improvement. Yeah. Right. Nishan. Right. So, uh, working with other tool makers was one of the biggest highlight of this particular answer is that they need to work together in, a, in order to grab the bigger opportunities. So, I think uh, it was learning for everyone. Thank you so much for your answers I and mean, taking questions as candid as possible. Now, uh, we'll take questions that audiences have asked. Uh, first question from Mr. Asis Bansali. He asks, how prepared are the tool makers as per Mr. Ravin's current ex experience? How tool makers are... Uh, just scared. Ashish was a kya question. Tha? Uh, how prepared are the tool makers? Yeah. What? Uh, Maybe for the current opportunities or something, because that's the thing. How prepared are the tool makers as per Mr. They are prepared. They are prepared. See, the moment we gave the orders of bumper tools to Indian tool makers, they are prepared. Only a little bit, we'll have to work. We had to work with them jointly, make a couple of visits. They are ready. Just we are showing the trust in them. Similarly, they need to raise to the occasion and just ensure that, yes, we can do it. Maybe we'll have to work 24 by 7 for the next couple of months, but we do it. We won't fail. That's okay. it. Things are possible. They are prepared. Okay. In capacity and capability both. Yeah.
capability they are capacity if we do it really fast turn around and let us find out innovative ways where is my waste why my machine is not running okay why the it is waiting really why why analysis should be a part of everyone job okay okay even if machine is idle for 5 minutes why that's the job of only line supervisor to keep asking why why right maybe in a month's time we will start getting eye openers within the own organization okay when okay. we see a simple uh, tool is not available to change the electrode so the machine is down but that machine is a huge fast machine crores how can i afford to keep it idle for even 10 minutes okay and i know by design ki my job is going to get over by 9 o'clock so before 9 quarter to 9 everything should be ready next to the machine for the next job okay so this why why analysis really this quality tools one has to use on the shop floor right they are not only meant for the quality of the end product let it be a fishbone diagram why why analysis and everything but nishan our tool people tooling people they are passionate they are ready to grow everybody's mindset whatever the smallest tool maker he is and the biggest tools tool makers like akshay everybody is willing to grow working hard to grow and rest assured we are there to support them right that nice to know sir so it is preparedness is there right the uh, next question is from mr gopala krishnan he asks what is the percentage of effort from your esteemed organization to promote if not all the all a few tier 2 supplier or tier 1 other than the handful of tier 1 like for asia and iic etc please share your valuable comments see my dear becoming a tier 1 is little tough job challenging job i will not say difficult but challenging why because tier 1 responsibility is to supply in time to the oem come what may come what may 24 by 7 lines are running including weekly off like a sunday or thursday depending on the area but they are running to meet their requirement and tier 1 has to supply tier 1 has to tune himself with the oem this is on the one side of the coin another side of the coin tier 1 has to work with the suppliers sub suppliers who are organized who are not organized who are big who are msme who are still smaller so he depends tier 1 depends on the all suppliers plus in house right so he has to be a in between any failure at supplier end whether his machine has failed he doesn't have a manpower he couldn't get the raw material in time entire pressure comes on the tier 1 to ensure his sub supplier line his shop is running so at that time whether that shop owner is there or he is abroad or he is at home whatever it is but our team goes there puts everything there in place makes him running get those parts at our end we assemble and give it to the oem so okay. this is a very challenging job of a tier 1 and you will be surprised gopal krishnan boss ki many of our suppliers with whom i talk to become tier 1 they said no boss we don't want to we don't want to put such a challenging task at our head better you do it we support you we don't want to as a policy we don't want to become tier 1 we want to be supplier only sub supplier only right so the people who are ready to be taking such challenge managing both side end customer as well as sub supplier most welcome to become a tier one okay uh just last question because we are already running out of time uh, this is yeah. from mr vinay dipikar so today major challenges are priced for the local tools as compared to the imported tools how do we work on these aspects these are the major challenges we are coming across yeah mr vinay uh, quickly i can share with you the tooling cost when we see we always compare a landed cost if we are importing the tool we do add our uh, logistic cost shipping and the duty and clearance and everything again that if we compare our local tools are economical definitely we can go on the other side the costing of the raw material whether it is the steel or the hrs or major bought out items 
costing is more or same in India and abroad. Okay, maybe the due to little difference of the currency. That's it. Otherwise, all these bought out items are locally available in India. So really, one needs to look into his own tooling setup. Where are my overheads going up? How I can control it to become more economical? So it is not just a import versus local, but within local also, how I can be competitive in the same area of tooling, either east zone or west or south zone, whichever zone I may be. But how best I can be economical. But as a customer, we compare always landed price of the tooling. So it's not just basic price. And of course, important local suppliers we do prefer because post sale service or when the tools are running on the molding machine, local supplier can visit, he can understand what is happening on that machine, whether my tool is working perfectly, do I need to learn anything from that and put in my new tool or correct this tool, that chances opportunities are very high on the local local tool makers. Right. So definitely they are preferred. Even sometimes we'll have to pay little extra. But if we know that risk, we mitigate that risk by local. He can do corrections later on. Because if that matching part, where this part is fixing, that another matching part has some deviation or some changes required. Getting the things done locally is very good and fast and safe way. So I don't think uh, local versus import is that big set now. Right. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Google, uh, for your time and sharing your experiences with us. Uh, uh, just last question I uh, came in from Mr. Asis Bansali again. Is TACO facing issue of ability of steel due to BIS and pre -volarity? Volarity. Yeah, 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 yeah. We do face, but okay. it has not just taken that serious step yet. Yes, uh, because steel suppliers are taking care of that. But yes, we need to follow those uh, rules and uh, get the things imported because steel is all imported finally. Right, right. R rule of land we have to follow. Sure. Yes, it's challenging. Okay, okay. Thanks. Thank you so much for your time and uh, yeah. the wisdom you have shared with us today. Uh, I'm sure everyone have learned something your experiences to the audience thank you so much for joining in and uh, stay tuned for the next edition uh, we'll uh, announce the uh, speaker and the uh, time and date uh, very soon thank you so yeah, much Mr. Uh, only last thing i would like to say my dear friends yes business is huge business on the platter let us take this opportunity let us be passionate vibrant and let us make our india really a uh, leader in the whole global things now and it's a time for us if we can't do now it will be never is right. now or never so let us really join hands make a wonderful thing and let us grow together and as a tata our philosophy we believe in growing together so any support any things required feel free we can discuss across the table on calls or anything but yes, let us join hands and uh, take the country to a next level. Thanks a lot for uh, giving this opportunity and the patients hearing, Nishant and entire audience team. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Good. Thank you, everyone.